Good afternoon, class. If you have downloaded this podcast, then that probably means that you have recently been given the Shakespearean epitaph assignment. Although we will discuss this assignment in more detail later in class, many of you probably have questions about it now. The purpose of this podcast is to help answer some of the questions you may have before you begin to work on the assignment. The first thing you may be wondering about is what exactly an epitaph is. Webster's Student Dictionary defines an epitaph as writing on a gravestone. Usually an epitaph describes the person that is buried there. Epitaphs can be quite brief or quite lengthy, depending on how detailed the description of the person is. Many epitaphs are also written as forms of poetry. Epitaphs are typically around five or six lines in length. Although epitaphs are brief, that doesn't mean that there isn't much thought put into them. An epitaph is a person's last message to the world, so many people put an enormous amount of effort into writing them. Another question you may have is this. How do I decide what character to choose? There are a number of factors that might contribute to your decision. The first and most obvious step is to choose a character that has died over the course of the play. The reason for this is obvious. You don't write an epitaph about someone who is still alive. The next step in this decision is to select a character that you know a lot about. It will be much easier to write a message about a character that you understand and sympathize with rather than one that you have no connection to at all. For example, more students will have a simpler time writing an epitaph about Lady Macbeth rather than the young Seward, since Lady Macbeth is a much more important character and is present for many of the key events of the play. Regardless, the most important element of your decision should be your personal preference. Choose a character that you're interested in. This is the best way to keep your assignment fun and interesting. Another question that comes up frequently during the assignment is how the epitaph should be written. There is no definite answer to this. The assignment is very free in its structure, and there is no right or wrong way to do it. But if you're looking for a few suggestions, here are some ideas. First, keep the epitaph short. A good idea is to make the epitaph roughly 10 lines or less. Also, it's generally a good idea to write the epitaph as a form of poetry, such as a sonnet, limerick, or haiku. But the most important thing to remember is that these are simply suggestions. As long as the epitaph specifically describes the character that you have chosen, then the assignment has been done correctly. What you create is entirely up to you. Lastly, I'm sure many of you are wondering what the finished project should look like. I've included a few examples in this podcast. The first example is a project that's a decent epitaph. It's not great. The epitaph is about Macbeth, and the students have written a haiku describing the defining moment of Macbeth's character. The content isn't the problem with this tombstone. It's excellent. The problem is that the project is very plain and uninteresting to look at. Students will still pass with a project like this, but to get an A, you need something a little bit better. The second epitaph is a lot more detailed in its design. This epitaph is about Banquo, and it's written in the form of a traditional sonnet. What really makes this tombstone stand out is its colorful design and content. This gravestone is easy to see and is sure to be noticed. This is an example of A material for sure. If you're looking for a template to base your design off of, this is it. In conclusion, I hope you have found this podcast useful. The assignment is supposed to be fun and unconventional, so if you are having trouble at any point, please feel free to ask me for any assistance you may need. Thank you for listening to this, and good luck on the assignment. Thank you.